I've just been informed by Chumley that despite popular consensus, the Venom movie is actually licious. 100% fresh on the liciousometer. If you go below 60% liciousness, you are not licious. And the Venom movie apparently was able to stay above that number. So yeah, Venom movie, totally licious. Take that, critics! You guys try to convince everybody that a movie that came out is not good, but you failed in your evil quest. Hey! <laughs> What's up guys, Martin here, and I don't know if you can hear it outside, I mean over there in the field near Duel Academy, but there is a leaf blower making noise right now. Because there's a lot of leaves here on Academy Island, obviously. Very leafy place. As you'll see in today's episode, a lot of trees involved, which means, by proxy, leaves. But yeah, what's up, it's Martin, and I'm here with yet another episode of Little Karibo Watches Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. A series where I, and you, hopefully, are watching Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the dub of, English-wise, on a somewhat weekly basis that's kind of elastic at this point. Uh, and we're watching it, and I'm gonna tell you what I think of every little plot moment of it. And I wanna give a quick shout out before I start talking about today's episode, uh, to the people in the hashtag Poshgate conspiracy crowd in them comments. Hey, what's up guys? You're insane, the lot of you. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, there is a splinter cell of the Yu-Gi-Oh! abridged fan base who are now convinced that Bastion is not posh, despite all evidence to the contrary. Contrary is a very posh word too. Plot twist, I was the posh one all along. But yeah, shout out to all them Poshgate You'll come around soon enough. But anyway, yeah, moving on to today's episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, episode 17, The Nature of the Draw. Draw. Which, if I were to hazard a guess, I would assume that the episode involves nature somehow. But you know, I've been wrong before. Not about Bastion being posh, though. You posh gate prats. Anyway, the episode starts off with Jaden and Cyrus rushing down the hallways of Duel Academy. And Cyrus begs Jaden to slow down a little bit. And Jaden says, no way, not on sandwich day. Okay, so I guess we can add sandwich day to the list of things that Jaden actually takes seriously. In case you need a reminder of things that Jaden takes less seriously than sandwich day, there's getting to entrance exams on time, and the fucking Undertaker getting murdered right in front of him yet yeah, less important to him than the day of sandwich. And then Jaden and Cyrus rush into a room where there is a cart filled to the brim with sandwiches, wrapped up in little sandwich bags. And when we get a closer look at these sandwiches, we get a real good look at the Duel Academy logo, which is printed on them. And as you can plainly see, the design has part of the letter D, uh, with an arrow pointing straight down, which obviously symbolizes your career prospects if you attend Duel Academy. So at least they're being somewhat honest about that. Jaden and Cyrus rush over to the cart of sandwiches and they lean over it and they have a good look at it for like three or four seconds, just staring in silence, like silent and amazed. <laughs> I don't know about you, but every time I went to the school cafeteria to get lunch, I would spend a good five to ten seconds being like... before I actually picked something. I was like, oh, food exists, what? Jaden says it's great that none of these bags are labeled, and Cyrus quite rightly points out that no, it's not good that you have no f***ing idea what food you're gonna be eating. How's that the greatest? There are ostrich burgers, grilled tongue sandwiches, or a half dozen other mystery meals that aren't exactly tasty. Yeah, not only that, you've got existentialism flavored sandwich, you've got Rob Paulson flavored sandwich, you got j sandwich somewhere in there. Just sandwich dripping with j but hey, it's fun to reach in there and have no idea what you're about to put in your mouth. According to Jaden, anyway. Yeah, but there's one good one. What? One? What? They put one good sandwich in the card and everything else is disgusting. What is- what? Actually, that does check out for school food. And where does this good sandwich come from, Jaden? Compliments to that magical rooster that lays the golden eggs! What? Cyrus quite rightly points out that roosters can't lay eggs. Is no one else concerned that they apparently live in nursery rhyme world as well? Is Humpty Dumpty also attending Duel Academy? Is it gonna be a climactic episode where Jack and Jill go up a hill, telling people that they're gonna go fetch a pail of water, but they might have a bit of an accident? Also, I wanna point out that this rooster is one of the sexiest f***ing roosters I've ever seen. 
Look at that face. It looks like Kazuma Kiryu and Nugget from Yakuza 0 had a very Bishonen chicken baby. I'm gonna f that chicken! So yeah, there's a chicken that lays golden eggs at Duel Academy. Why are they making sandwiches out of it? Here's an idea, take the egg, invest in something. Or have people look at the magical chicken for tickets, money. I don't know, do something other than making one sandwich. It's just wasteful. Also, golden eggs can't taste that good. You'd eat one and your teeth would be shattered. So hey, Jaden, by all means, eat a golden egg sandwich from the magical rooster thing. Cyrus says it's been five weeks since Jaden's been able to get the magical egg sandwich. I'm just riveted by this plot already. Ready. I don't know about you guys. I really want Jaden to get a sandwich that he likes. I'm on the edge of my seat about this whole sandwich situation. Also, I want to point out that magical chicken that can lay golden eggs, still not the best animal character in this show. Pharaoh the cat is still Bay. Jaden picks a random sandwich out of the cart, puts it in his mouth, and is disgusted as it turns out to be grilled tongue. And then Alexis comes in holding two sandwiches right in front of her chest. And I know what you're thinking, I'm gonna make a joke about it being like tits. But no, I'm actually gonna point out that it's bollocks, first of all, that she got to pick two sandwiches instead of just one. Because if that's how it works, then you can just keep grabbing sandwiches until you get the one with the golden egg. And then it's, what, what is that? Secondly, she must have walked out of the room holding these two sandwiches and then come back in, having not started eating them at all. He, what's she doing? She, what, she just pick up two sandwiches, not eat them, leave, come back just to talk to, what? Alexis points out that it's better to have a bad draw here than in a duel. Not really, because if you have a bad draw in a duel, you don't have to put something that will potentially set off your allergies into your mouth. You just lose a card game. So no, not, not better. Do you think one of the sandwiches is the proverbial sh sandwich? I mean, if they have the, the chicken that lays a golden egg, then they could have anything in there. Jaden says, oh, I see what happened. You took the golden egg witch so you could have lunch with me. And Alexis immediately blushes and is like, no, babaka. And she explains that she was practicing her impression of a retired professional wrestler. I was just practicing my draws. Oh, she's gonna puke when she eats the sandwich because it's gonna be gross. Miss Dorothy, the lady who runs the card shack, comes in and explains that Alexis is right. In the last five weeks, nobody has drawn the golden egg witch. That's a sandwich made out of a golden egg, not an egg witch. You know, it's not like Robotnik practicing wicker. Oh, Robotnik as an egg witch. There's a cosplay challenge for you. I like that they had to specify that it's been five weeks since the last person drew the golden egg witch because it makes it clear that Jaden is the only one special enough to do it because he's so good at everything. <gasps> I'm sick of it. Cyrus says that egg witch thief must be pretty good to be able to draw it every week. And Jaden gives him this really pissed off look. He's like, how dare you suggest that someone could be good at something that isn't me. Miss Dorothy says that someone must be sneaking in and stealing the golden egg witch. Why wouldn't you just steal the golden eggs? You know, the things that have actual value? Not the f***ing sandwich made out of it. Jaden then announces that they're going to go on 24-7 sandwich surveillance. Has anyone considered investing in some security cameras at this school? Seems like it would solve a lot of these problems they're having. The missing kids, the stolen sandwiches, what Chumley does under cover of darkness at midnight. The list goes on. And then we get that banger of a tune, the Yu-Gi-Oh! GX opening theme. And I should point out that in this opening sequence, there is actual video evidence that Jaden appears to have caused some sort of car accident. Like when you look at it, that car has clearly been like driven off road due to some unforeseen Jaden Yuki related accident. He's clearly guilty. He's going like, sure hope nobody notices that I just crashed Crowler's minivan into the side of the road. And Chumley and Cyrus are clearly like, hey Jaden, we don't care that you committed some sort of crime. The bastards. So yeah, his friends don't seem to give a shit that they are his accomplices in his car-related criminal activity. In the dead of night at the card shack, Jaden Yuki does his impression of the Steven Universe episode release schedule. Quiet, it's coming. Slowly, slowly, here it comes. And then we see Jaden and Cyrus playing a card game with regular playing cards? What fresh madness is this? Although it is really funny because the, the Joker card there is actually Sagi the Dark Clown. That's really f***ing great. I like that. I like that little detail. 
Can't escape that gay clown. And then Jaden draws the card from Cyrus's hand and celebrates it being the one he wanted to pick. Okay, so what's the f***ing deal with you guys playing card games that don't involve giant monster holograms, huh? Can you, uh, explain yourselves, please? Chumley has joined the team in their stakeout, presumably because he completely misunderstood the use of the word steak. For the last time, Chumley, he steals egg sandwiches, not grilled cheese. Well, then that sounds like the egg witch thief has his priorities all f***ing wrong. Jaden turns to Alexis and asks her to back him up. But hold on, what are those posters behind her? Are they, is that anime Falero? Does Alexis have a huge crush on J-pop sensation anime Falero? I mean, he is good looking, I can't blame her, but why'd you have to bring those posters of anime Falero with you? Just for a stakeout, what? Jaden leans into Cyrus's ear and whispers, what is Alexis doing here? And Cyrus says, I think it's her homework. Why are you guys treating this like it's some sort of clandestine conversation? Just ask her what she is doing. Cyrus, what is it, Jaden? What is Alexis doing over there? I think she's doing her homework, okay? Cyrus, what? What's she doing now? Still her homework, Jaden. Oh, okay. Cyrus! Alexis is reading her school book and she thinks to herself that maybe the egg witch thief has some connection to her missing brother. Unless your brother took the form of a sandwich, it seems unlikely. Dear, Dorothy brings in a huge plate of pastries and tells everyone to dig in. And Chumley invents a meme decades before it becomes a thing. Ah, oh, what are those? Dorothy tells everyone that these are her special pastries. And they have strawberry flavor, chocolate, and lemon custard. Flavored pastries. Hang on, why can't I say pastries? Sh I live in the four kids universe now, I can't say that. Pastries. Pastries. Well, I guess I'll just have to get used to not using 20% of my vocabulary. Chumley looks at the pastries and asks which of them is most like grilled cheese. This is some prime four kids sh right here. Jaden leans in and says, wait, we should draw for them. I want strawberry. Chumley asks if Jaden really wants to draw rice balls like cards. But then everyone else in the room thinks that Jaden's idea is top notch. Once again, I think that Chumley might actually be the smartest person in the series secretly. Jaden takes a bite of the pastry and happily declares that he got strawberry. Cyrus then congratulates Jaden on picking the correct pastry that is also a pastry that has strawberry in it and is not grilled cheese. What the f*** is this scene? Later that night, a mysterious muscular figure tries to sneak into the dual shack under cover of Dark Dark. And then we see Jaden, Cyrus, and Chumley hiding under a table together. And then we see Alexis hiding in one of the lockers, and unfortunately not behind one of the posters of sexy anime J-pop idol Falero Guy. And now for fun, I want you to imagine yourself taking a shower, and then through the shower door, you see this. You're welcome for the nightmares. After about five minutes of clunking and rattling from the other side of the door, Jaden figures out what's going on. It's the egg witch thief. The thief then crawls into the dual shack and goes over to the sandwich cart and starts looking for the egg witch. So wait, his plan is to wait until everybody's had a chance at getting a sandwich Hope that nobody gets the one that he's looking for. And then go into the cart late at night and grab the egg, which why has nobody gotten it by now? Are there only like 12 kids in this school who like sandwiches? Having said that, there is a lot of incentive to not try to eat the egg witch because every other flavor is apparently garbage. So one has to think that the way to eliminate this egg witch problem is to stop giving your kids shitty sandwiches. No wonder so many students are going missing. They're probably voluntarily getting kidnapped so that they don't have to eat a raccoon sandwich at some point. Dorothy turns on the lights and we see a half-naked muscular man with his long anime man hair standing there caught with a sandwich in his hand. And upon this happening, the egg witch thief cups a hand to his mouth and does a shitty knockoff Tarzan yell. And then he manages to push the sandwich cart through 
the metal screen door, obliterating it. What is that sandwich car made out of adamantium? The Egg Witch Thief rushes through the outskirts of the Duel Academy, and the gang give chase. As they're running after him, Alexis thinks to herself, This guy's definitely got something to hide. There's no way we can let him get away. Yeah, like maybe the fact that he steals sandwiches from people. Have you not been paying attention? The Egg Witch Thief jumps off the side of Duel Academy and starts swinging his way through the forest. Again, like a shitty knockoff Tarzan. Or like a good Shia LaBeouf in Indiana Jones 4. And as he's swinging through the forest outside Duel Academy, I can imagine that he swings by at least half a dozen or so kids that have gone missing from the school due to negligence. Typical day at Duel Academy, you know? Chumley is glad that they don't have to run anymore. He's fat! But Jaden says that they do have to run, or they'll never get their egg witch back. Just use Uber Eats and get another egg witch delivered to you if you're that bothered by it, mate. We then see the egg witch thief continuing to swing through the forest. You know, I had no idea that George of the Jungle had fallen on such hard times. They had to resort to sandwich theft to get by. It says a lot about celebrity culture, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. As he's swinging through the trees, he spots Jaden and company just sort of sauntering through the forest. Like they're in no rush. How did they catch up to him? Anyway, he lands nearby and then rushes over to a waterfall and starts climbing it real fast. Mate, I told you about this. Don't go chasing waterfalls. Just stick to the rivers and lakes that you are used to. Jaden and friends watch the Egg Witch Thief climb the waterfall and are stunned. Presumably because the idea of anybody being good at something that isn't playing card games is just inconceivable to them. And then Miss Dorothy arrives and yells, Damon! at the Egg Witch Thief. Miss Dorothy says she knows the Egg Witch Thief and he should know better than to steal. And upon hearing this, the Egg Witch Thief falls from the top of the waterfall into to the water below. Dorothy takes a good look at him and says, ah, you've changed. And he says, I change. I change for better. You know, you might want to laugh at the way he's speaking, but at least he didn't think that rice balls were pastries. Miss Dorothy explains that Damon used to be an obelisk blue, and he would always visit the card shack, especially on sandwich day. And then we see a flashback of Damon before he became all thickified, trying to pick a sandwich from the cart. And I gotta say, yeah, he does kind of look different as an obelisk blue. In fact, he looks like what Weevil Underwood and Chaz Princeton's baby would look like. In the flashback, Damon bites into a sandwich and is devastated that he got a sardine sandwich. To the point that he falls to his knees and Miss Dorothy gasps. Well, look, Miss Dorothy, if you don't like when this happens, why not stop overloading the cart with sh Sandwiches! Jaden has a hard time believing that this is the same Damon that Miss Dorothy is describing. I knew person now. I live in the nature. I hone my skills. And by hones his skills, he means that now he has to poop in a bush. Jaden asks why Damon left, and Damon says that when he was a student, he tested well, but when it came to dueling, he had some degree of difficulty. Rather like the degree of difficulty that I'm having believing any of this. And then we see a clip of civilized Damon dueling someone in the duel arena. And Damon's like, okay, time to take down Jinzo. Oh no! I drew a trap card! I'd better go become a primitive beast man who lives in the wild now! That's pretty much what happens. Damon explains that his experiences with nature helped him to understand the nature of drawing trading cards. Yes, that, that is a thing that he says. And hilariously, Alexis thinks... I'm thinking this guy can't help me find my brother. In fact, from the smell of him, I don't think he can even find a bar of soap. That's a, a little bit judgmental there, Alexis. I mean, he is homeless. And then we get a monster montage of Damon training to become one with the draw, which includes a scene where buff Damon stands in front of a waterfall as trading cards cascade down the waterfall in front of him, and he reaches in and grabs the exact ones that he wants which of course are completely ruined now due to the water damage. I mean, technically he's on the right track. If he does put a bunch of water damaged cards in his deck, he will be able to figure out when he's going to draw them because they will look like sh I'm sorry, Damon, but why not just use something other than trading cards? Like, I don't know, leaves. You know, something that isn't worth a significant amount of money to a guy who has no home. Damon says that his skills did improve, but the only way to test them was to take the ultimate challenge. 
the Egg Witch Drawing Challenge. To draw the Egg Witch. I don't know, mate. I feel like that waterfall trick was more impressive than picking the right sandwich. Damon breaks down crying, insisting that he shouldn't be called a thief just because he took a few sandwiches. This is a weird remake of Les Mis. Jaden summarizes the plot of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. We understand. I don't. And then Jaden challenges Damon to a card game, saying that if Jaden wins, then Damon has to stop stealing. But if Damon wins, then he gets all the egg witches to himself. Do you think Jaden challenges homeless people on the street to card games? And if they win, he has to give them some cash. But if he wins, then he gets to walk on. Damon says that he's an expert card drawer, so there's no way Jaden will win. Meanwhile, Jaden says that he's no slouch in that regard either. You guys are bragging about your ability to draw things at random. What's next? You're gonna boast about your ability to convert oxygen into CO2. So the duel starts and Jaden summons elemental hero Avion, who, oh, that is an ass. Ha ha ha, ha, he, ha, 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 I, yeah. And then Damon summons Drawler in attack mode, not to be confused with Drooler, which is what I was a second ago. Because seriously, goddamn. Drawler gains 500 attack points for every card that Damon sends back to his deck. So Damon sends all the cards in his hand back to his deck. And Cyrus says that Drawler's decked out now. Actually, with him putting cards back into his deck, he's much further from decking out than he was before. Oh, you mean decked out like upgraded, right? Uh, sorry, still thinking about that ass. Drawler then attacks Avion and commits the mortal sin of flattening that plump little bottom that he has. Also, Avion is destroyed, and that's also bad. But the ass! Damon explains that when Drawler destroys a monster, rather than go to your graveyard, it goes to the bottom of your deck. And speaking of bottom, there it is. Jaden fusion summons Rampart Blaster in defense mode. And Jaden explains that even though it's in defense mode, if he halves its attack power, it can still make a direct attack. And Rampart Blaster fires a number of missiles from its rocket launcher at the primitive Tarzan ripoff. Damon is surprised by Jaden's skill. He draw good for men who wear shirt and have haircut. You know what? Those standards are so easy to meet that from now on, I'm going to say that everything I do is pretty good for a guy with a haircut and a shirt. Damon then activates his trap card, Miracle Draw. And he explains that from now on, at the beginning of every turn, if he can guess what he's going to draw, then Jaden takes damage. But if he gets it wrong, then he takes damage. Everyone is shocked by this, except for Alexis, who apparently is too distracted by something off screen. Presumably, Miss Dorothy lifting up her skirt to reveal a lifetime supply of Tickle Me Elmos under there. Damon and Jaden have this heated exchange. You think I won't guess right? You might. No might. Ah yes, no might. The evil bizarro twin of all might. And then Damon has some sort of vision of the cards going up the waterfall in order to concentrate on what he thinks the card is going to be. This is like something out of Limitless, in that it is really stupid and doesn't really hold water beyond the initial premise. Damon sees the trading card card loan in his mind, and as if by bullshit, he draws it. Everyone is so shocked by this that a split screen happens. Damon then activates card loan, which gives Jaden a thousand life points back, but then loses a thousand life points himself. This allows Damon to draw another card, but then he has to put it back in his deck at the end of the turn. Everyone is stunned by this development. Except for Alexis, who is too busy being distracted by Miss Dorothy just off screen, who has begun feasting on the entire discography of ACDC on vinyl record. It's very distracting. Damon then activates the spell card Drawber, which means Jaden has to draw a card and Damon will guess what it is. And if Damon gets it right, then Jaden has to send all the cards on his side of the field and in his hand back to his deck. And once again, defying astronomical odds, Damon guesses right. And yet again, everyone is shocked, except for Alexis, who is too busy being distracted by Miss Dorothy just off screen, constructing an exact replica of the Czechoslovakia flag from the webbing between her fingers. Damon commands Drawler to attack Jaden, who sadly does not get crushed to a bloody pulp underneath the weight of the monster. He does take a thousand life points of damage though. Jaden then summons the creatively named Rottweiler in defense mode. Couldn't even call it 
it robot Weiler? I mean, do, do something with it, not just rot Weiler. What are you doing? Chumley declares that this situation is not licious. Added to the list. All Damon has to do is use Miracle Draw one more time, guess right, and it's goodbye Eggwitch. The stakes could not be higher. Also, I thought you wanted grilled cheese. And then in a genuinely hilarious moment, the show reenacts what it's like to try and watch Yu-Gi-Oh with your friends. Oh man, is it over yet? Uh, no. Uh, no, we're gonna watch the entire first season of Yu-Gi-Oh GX and you're gonna like it. Damon knows that there's only one card that can help him now. I must draw Shield Crush to win. Must draw Shield Crush. Give me Shield Crush. Well, personally, I roll on Seth Crushings. But this time, Damon guessed wrong, and he actually draws Doron, a strange burn victim looking creature from Silent Hill. And of course, everyone is even more shocked that Damon got it wrong this time. Except for Alexis, who is too busy looking off screen at Dorothy force feeding ice cream to Gilbert Gottfried while standing on a broken deck chair. Damon then attacks Rottweiler with Drawler. Did that guy just run over Jaden's dog? Hey, remember that episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX where that guy ran over Jaden's dog? <laughs> Jaden then uses Rottweiler's special ability to bring polymerization and Bastinatrix back into his hand. Damon then attacks with Doron, which involves it sending astral projections of itself toward Jaden, who then beat him up. Dash Dinger! I feel like I'm watching David Lynch direct an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Except somehow weirder. Damon mocks Jaden with a sense of bluster and bravado. Soon, like the seasons end, I end you. Okay, that's enough. All this nature talk, that terrible fake voice. Fake voice? Come on, Damon. You spent one year out in the wilderness. Jaden Yuki there just pulling a timeline out of his ass. Nobody's mentioned how long Damon's been gone, but Jaden apparently knows. Jaden then lays into Damon for believing that he was good at something. Drawing cards was as predictable as snow melting. You'd never guess wrong and you just did. Drawing's about using your gut, you know, being in tune with yourself. Even then, you'll never guess every draw, right? Okay, so the first two thirds of this entire bloody episode were treating drawing cards like it was a genuine skill, including giving examples of Jaden doing it over and over again, and even the Egg Witch Thief doing it over and over again. We even saw that he did it with some sort of magic, limitless mind trick that he did. But no, now Jaden's like, by the way, that was all bollocks. It's nonsense. It's just random. So the episode was just like, ha, I'm just gonna pull the rug out from under you. Premise. Because Jaden was forced to shuffle his deck on a previous turn, he has the fine-ass madness that is elemental hero Avion back in his hand. And I do mean fine ass madness. Jaden uses polymerization to fuse elemental hero Bastina f with elemental hero Avion's ass in order to summon Flame Wingman. And Flame Wingman takes Damon's life points down to zero. And primitive as he is, Damon still knows to assume the traditional I just lost a card game stance being on all fours. Damon immediately drops the Tarzan act and starts speaking like a whiny school kid. It's kinda hilarious. I trained out here for a whole year. Hey, you're speaking like a human being again. Yeah, now it's your turn, Jaden. Dorothy and Damon share an emotional reunion as they embrace each other. And then Jaden makes things really awkward by saying, It's Edwitch time. Read the room, Jaden. I know it isn't a room. But still, read it. Next week, next month, next year, I don't know, we see Jaden going up to the sandwich cart with Damon, who now looks completely normal again. Is Damon related to Christian Bale and he is somehow able to change the entire structure of his anatomy in order to fit whatever role he wants to play? Jaden asks if anyone's drawn the Egg Witch yet, and holy f am I tired of saying Egg Witch. But it turns out that Alexis found the Egg Witch before anybody else could, flying in the face of the premise of the episode that Damon was able to reach in and get the Egg Witch every time because it was a skill. Nah, it was dumb luck. The episode was lying to you. And that's the end of the episode. I'm starting to see a really weird theme with Yu-Gi-Oh! GX where they present the concept of something to you and then are like, hey, it's a fake out. And then the next week they'll do it again 
but it'll be a real thing. Like, when they had The Undertaker show up, it was a fake spirit. But then Jinzo showed up, and he was a real spirit. And then last time, we had the, the dual giant, but he wasn't really the dual giant. It was just a guy, and he was, it was a plan. It was a, a trick. And then this week, you have Damon running around, and he's a legit wild man attacking people. It's like every other week, it's like, no, it's bollocks. And then it's like, no, it's a real thing that's actually happening. I get whiplash from it. Don't get me wrong, I did actually enjoy this episode. It's completely ludicrous. But I've come to accept that GX just doesn't really care. In a good way. I think my issue with it before I started really investing myself in it was that a lot of these really over-the-top situations just... I couldn't buy into it. I couldn't, I couldn't put myself in a situation where I cared about what was happening. But I've come to realize that it's just the sheer entertainment value of how silly all of this is. Uh, it's not about, like, being, like, emotionally invested in the characters, necessarily. Uh, right now, it's just zany adventures. And as far as zany adventures go, this one was a pretty zany one. I don't know, it was fun. It is kind of insane that Damon just, like, o overnight reverted back to his original body and hairstyle. I just... How? What? Magic? More importantly than that, though, the real question I have about this episode is... Who had the best ass? In my opinion, it was a clear winner. Elemental Hero Avion. More like Elemental Hero AV Damn. But who do you think had the best ass out of all those characters in the episode? Please let me know in the comments and drown out those bloody posh gate conspiracy theorists. Cause yeah, it could have been anyone's. You could like Damon's ass. You could like Dorothy's ass. There's a lot of asses, but it's up to you to decide which one survives. That sounds very threatening to people's bums. Before I wrap things up, I want to give an Elemental Hero Avion's ass sized thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Everybody, everybody, you guys, are, you're incredible. All these names, all these names, they're brilliant. Well, that name is great. Well, that name is great. It's probably the same name because they're moving. Are they going that way? Are they going that way? I always get the direction wrong. But more than anything, I want to say thank you for your support. We wouldn't be able to put out content that hopefully is to your satisfaction as much as we do, if at all, without you. So thank you. Thank you so much. I also want to mention that we have a new shirt available in our merch store at sharkrobot.com, which is the, uh, the darts, screw the wools, I have the shoe, but get out of shirt. And you can buy it now. Please do support us. Buy the shirt. We have it in all sizes, all sorts of sizes and shapes. Actually, just the one shape, shirt shape. Uh, but it's great. Please buy it, please. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Thanks for watching, guys. And until next time, I'm going to strip naked and run into the forest and try and figure out how to become better at card game drawing. Catch you later. Ah! Jaden, is it over now? Ah!